Hi Beth, welcome. Welcome. We're really, really excited to introduce Beth Patman, who's going to chat to us. Hi, Hi yeah. Uh, so Beth, we would love if you just um, dived into kind of your cancer story so far and where you're at at the moment. Okay, so um, I was actually diagnosed in August of last year, so amid the um, COVID. So initially when I rang the doctors, it was delayed a little bit because of my age and because of COVID. So I was asked to, to wait and then I went in, which was fair. They were just worried that it might be hormonal changes when I found this lump in my boob. Um, however, I went into the doctors, they, they examined the lump, sent me for a scan. And the next week I was seeing a surgeon and diagnosed with cancer. It was just so fast. Um, and then you have staging and they've checked to see if it had spread. And luckily for me, it, it was stage three and it hadn't spread anywhere other than my lymphs. So that was really lucky, actually. I was really scared about that. Um, so since then, I've had a fertility treatment to, because I'm only 31, so to preserve my eggs, which is um, kind of quite hardcore, actually. You have to have quite a lot of uh, yeah. injection. You know, it's a quite invasive treatment. Um, but also, again, very lucky because that's all provided through the NHS, which, you know, because you may lose your fertility. So that's pretty amazing that they do offer that. Um, and I had a mastectomy, left side and lymph node clearance. And as I had quite high uh, lymph node involvement, um, I had like six, no, 15, sorry, out of 23 were cancerous. So I had to have uh, six, six months of chemo, basically, and then... I'm going to have, once I finish the chemo, three weeks of radiotherapy. And then I will be on Zolodex and I think probably Tamoxifan for the next 10, 15 years, something like that. And then having regular checkups. That's my... <laughs> Is there any um, cancer history in your family? Mm. You know, your mum or aunties or... No one in my immediate bloodline either. So yeah. no, not really. It was about the blue. You didn't know about checking and stuff like that. It was just that you did that yourself. Yeah, so I think, so now I've got really passionate about the checking and telling people to check. And I think it's really important. And actually I've just um, got started um, going to volunteer for Copperfield to try and help them and be a boobet and raise awareness. And I've been trying to do bits on social media and yeah. and as a nurse which I'm a nurse in my day job I felt really stupid that I wasn't checking but you, just naively you think you know cancer happens to people in their 60s 70s 80s you just don't think that yeah. it's I know oh. Copperfield are just fantastic I think it's a brilliant charity because I mean it's targeting you know young adults and yeah you know, I you know more people talk about it, yeah, and removing that kind of stigma, I think, as well. That, yeah. yeah, and like normalizing touching your boobs and <laughs> talking about boobs. <laughs> and so, obviously, Beth, you you are really young. Um, how have you dealt with it um, mentally? You know, like um, what what have what things have you done and used for to help you kind of get through all of this? Uh, so when I first got diagnosed, I also I sorted out counselling um, because I thought through the diagnosis that would be really helpful. Um, so I've had counselling quite a, a, through a charity uh, throughout. And then I also, for me, a massive thing um, has been exercise. So I lost my long term partner. He died at the beginning, well, the end of last year, uh, week, a week before Christmas, actually. And um, so after he died, obviously I fell apart initially. And then I got, I found exercise and going outside in nature really, really, really helpful. Yeah. And actually I think in a way that gave me the tools to then cope with this diagnosis because I just tried to continue my exercise and keep as fit as possible and maintain my health, which actually has been really helpful, I think for side effects because I've done really well with my chemo side effects and done really well with my mental state and as well like the counseling and the exercise I think everyone would benefit from counseling whether or not they have cancer but anyway that's <laughs> for a different time. 
look good feel better they're a really good charity i think and they they do for women and men and and you know different things they do lessons on makeup and also lessons on wigs like this is a wig so they do lessons on things like that i did a makeup course with them it was actually over zoom and um because i found i mean there's no brilliant element but like when you when i lost my hair that was really really upsetting you know it's coming but it's still you kind of can't prepare for it and i think it does take a bit of your femininity away really as a woman you just feel and you know and also it really identifies you as a as a cancer patient so people see that you're unwell and indifferent but yeah i went on the course with them and uh, they teach you about doing your eyebrows for your your face shape and things like that and they teach you like a real basic kind of um level of makeup and understanding how to fit your face yeah so do you think um because you have uh, written a blog and um, it's on our love rose website um yeah it's a very good read i think um you know people should go and, and have a look at that but um you were saying on there that that perhaps that uh, when all of this is, is finished that um, you were thinking you might go into um, kind of actually helping other people with fitness and that might be a slightly career, new career change for you? We're looking at trying to set up an exercise race, like program. I think it would be similar to what Macmillan and um, Trek stock, they also offer like kind of eight week programs. I think Macmillan's might be a bit more substantive, but um, we're looking at trying to set something up that runs alongside people's chemo. So I'm hopefully going to get involved with that when I go back to work. And then eventually once I'm settled back in, go into working in oncology. And I just feel like I've got a lot to give now in this department really. And it's something I feel really kind of passionate about, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. And you'll be the person that someone who's going through is further back in their journey will want someone like yeah. who's who knows so well what it's like. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, from anything from personal experience, yeah. it's definitely, you know, you have to pass it on. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And try and take, you know, having cancer is really crap. <laughs> so trying to take the positives and do something good with it and make other people's experience better can only be good, really, I guess. One last question, but did you find it quite bizarre, you know, um, because obviously you're on the other side, usually. You're the yeah. nurse and the carer. Did you find it really yeah. uh, difficult being the patient? Yeah, I hated it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it, it was because of COVID, actually. So normally I work on a surgical ward. We do uh, a lot of orthopedic work, uh, some max facts, some different bits and pieces. Like, it's quite varied. However, because of COVID, we were actually doing all of the oncology ops. So uh, all of my patients became uh, oncology patients. And so I was, I remember like when I was going through my scans and I'd been diagnosed and I was waiting for my mastectomy, I was still working. So I was looking after patients who were coming in to have tumors removed and, and I knew that I had a tumor yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. It was really bizarre. For real, I yeah. would say. Yeah. 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 Well, I have to say, Beth, that, um, you know, your story will resonate with, with lots of our ladies and um, just wish you the best of luck with the rest of your treatment. You look, you're looking fabulous yeah. and you're, you're absolutely <laughs> handling it with yeah. um, such Amazing. Your positivity strength. and strength. Yeah. yeah. Is Thank you. I'm going to, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Take the compliments and run with it. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, well, we'll catch up with you when you're completely done and dusted. And um, yeah, and we'll speak to you again. But it was lovely. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. No so worries. Much. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Ben. Bye. 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 Bye.